Sometimes in order to achieve that financial goal, you gotta be cheap. My name is Carmen. And I'm Darius. And cutting back may be a thing or a way in which you go about saving some money so that in the future, you can have more of it. Mm -hmm. So in this video, we wanna talk about ways in which you can be cheap so that you can get rich or to get ahead. So let's go ahead and just have a candid conversation with you because I know that this is something that Darius and I have totally gone through. Um, Darius loves it because he's cheap. <laughs> For me, it was and, a little bit more of a struggle. <laughs> and Carmen likes to spend money. So there's a struggle that we're having. Maybe you'll see it in this video. <laughs> so the question is, can you get rich by being cheap? Yes. No, I don't think you can. Yes, and, okay. and that's coming from the person that's cheap and the person that likes to spend money. <laughs> so how can, you, how can you get rich by being cheap? Okay, so let me preface. I guess what I mean is you need to have a plan and there needs to be balance. I'm mm -hmm. not necessarily saying that you need to be cheap, but you have to have a plan. And the plan is that you need to make sure that your dollars are allocated appropriately. Mm -hmm. So I guess what, I, what I'm saying is not that you're being cheap, it's just you're not spending irresponsibly. Okay, I, I can... I can dig that. Yeah. And it's funny that it's coming from you because I'm the one that handles the budget and get on you about <laughs> that spending. So I guess it's working. It is working. But well, my, yeah, you give me my, my parameters and I plan my parameters, right? Yeah. That's not being cheap. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, on, a, on another note, I'm thinking of just scarcity. If you yeah. are cheap, that means that you're scared oh, to spend money. I so see. I'm thinking of it as a scarcity standpoint. And you know, whatever you think, or however you feel, that's what you attract. I so how can you get rich by not thinking that there's enough? Mm, okay. Rich means that there's abundance. Mm -hmm. Wealth means that there's abundance. Got it. Your cup overfloweth Got because it. there's so much. <laughs> overfloweth. Overfloweth. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so in, in essence, we're having two different conversations. So, but let's do that. Let, let's go down uh, your path first and let's talk about my path because I think my path is where we need to end up. Okay. Right? So 100% wealth and being rich is a mindset absolutely and if your mindset is to be cheap mm -hmm. then you can't attract more wealth into your life mm -hmm. it's like knowing that you know if you give away money more of it is going to come mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so when we say being cheap that means like not spending any money not like literally you can't take money out of your purse strings because mm -hmm. it's it's you know a headache for you to spend money talking about like living like no one else so you can live like no one else mm -hmm. no one else yeah some, somebody told us how to do that but uh anyways <laughs> so how that all works, you, you can't uh, have a mind of abundance if you're constantly thinking about skipping, right? So, so we're saving money here, we're saving money there, we can't spend this, we can't do that. You know, the minute that you put can't into your vocabulary, you're already keeping yourself from, from doing whatever it is that you say that you want to do. Mm -hmm. So in Darius's essence where he's talking about cheap and not all essence of being cheap, you have to be able to give your money away. You know what I'm saying? Like I think that's what money's for. You're mm -hmm. supposed to spend it. Yeah, yeah. But you just it's, have to make sure you spend it on the right thing. It's currency, right? It has to continue it moving. Has to stay emotional. Yeah, the, the current. We have to think about it in that way. That is the whole name of it. Currency. Money has to be in motion. So uh, that's one thing that we learned from one of our you know business mentors. As he was saying, you have to be able to give your money away and not think about it. You know, think twice about it because it's always going to come back because that's just the 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 law of the universe. Right. So give it away to an investment. Hmm. Because the money sitting inside of your banking account right now isn't doing, is, anything. Isn't doing anything. It's actually use, losing money mm -hmm. because of inflation and taxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're recycling uh, uh, toilet paper and then, well, that's pretty pretty nasty. Not recycling toilet paper, but recycling uh, paper towels, you know, yeah. reusing those is not what we're talking about today. So making sure, again, that we're, we're talking about cheap so if you're being cheap, meaning that you have a scarcity mindset that you're holding back and you can't spend any money for whatever reason because it has to be in the bank, that is limiting what you're able to do because if you're not going to spend the money uh, to flip money and to generate money to come back to you, then you know, you're know you capping your, your, your uh, earning potential. Yeah. Now let's get into your point because uh, being cheap means that you also don't spend other people's money, meaning you don't use credit cards because you want to have your own money so that you don't have to overspend to use someone else's true true so to your point making sure that you have a plan make sure you have um a, a wealth plan is is very important because mm -hmm. you can spend money mm -hmm. in the right places so that you can make more money mm -hmm. but you know you can't not spend money on anything you can't keep your money and not invest it because yeah. that doesn't do anything for you. No, it doesn't. And so I, I guess what I was talking about being cheap was if I'm the spender in the relationship, right? Which you are. <laughs> 
<laughs> then the the point is that sometimes you can feel like you want to spend more money, but you shouldn't. That's what I meant as far as being cheap. But for me, I'd, I have the mindset where I understand what we're doing, the plan that we have in place, and why it makes sense to only spend in certain categories and to do you know more investments that then money where your money isn't going to make an investment. Mm-hmm. So I totally get that. So I was I was more so just being um, funny in the sense of people who are adjusting <laughs> to budgets may feel like oh my god I'm being cheap and I can't spend how I want to even when the money is there it doesn't make sense for you to spend all of your money even though you have it right you have to make sure your plan is adjusted to your you personally Mm -hmm. the plan that we have isn't you know the same plan that you might have for your yourself and your family because two different people two different households and two different ways of spending money two different Um, habits that we have. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that the plan that you create for yourself is centered around you specifically. That's why it's so important that you create it. You know, it's nice to, you know, look on somebody else's paper and see what they're doing and get some ideas. But ultimately, your plan should be your plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So so let's let's transition then fully into how you create this plan. Right. So if you make, you know, five thousand dollars, if you bring home $5,000 $5,000 a month, mm-hmm. then we need to start creating, you know, little, little groups of, of, of subjects in which you are allocating that $5,000. Mm-hmm. So we absolutely say that, you know, when we think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, you need food, <laughs> shelter, and, and water and clothing. So your, the majority of your income should be allocated towards that bucket making sure that you have a roof over your head, you have a transportation and you have clothes and food. Ideally have. Because yeah. your true expenses is your needs. Mm-hmm. That's what allows you to get to and from your source of income, which allows you to have a roof over your head so you can be rested to get to your source of income. Your needs are what allows you to get to and from where your source of income lies so that you can continue to make money. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And understanding that, I think that when we were you know, transitioning into really understanding our, our finances is making sure that we there's levels to this mm-hmm. and we have to put priority levels to uh, this these specific categories. We can't co-mix things that aren't necessities with things that are necessities. Mm-hmm. So if we're, if we're designating half of the income towards our Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that first level, we need to make sure that we then understand what the next level is and not um, not deviating from the plan right. because there's no reason why you should be spending you know a thousand dollars in hair care and in grooming right every single month because that's that's just not responsible especially if you make five thousand dollars because that's 20 percent of your income with that exactly that that's the example that i'm giving right so being that that's 20 percent of your income we're saying that that's not a good idea so you need to make sure that you put uh, limits to the specific categories in which you're spending so that's why we say 50 percent should go towards your absolute must-haves and then we're going to say another 30 percent should go towards the uh the wants wants, yeah. yeah and if you have the income then splurge in the places that you that you have the funds allocated to do so Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. you know if you want to go to dubai when everything gets settled and you have the funds to do so go to dubai and get you your you know gold toilets and leave the water running and ride a camel do the thing do do all that stuff (laughs) but also make sure that the what's left over the 20 percent. make sure you use you allocate funds for your savings yes because savings is really important the reason why is 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 i mean they call it savings because it's supposed to save you it's supposed to save you in the event that you need it break glass in case of emergency Mm -hmm. and it's also supposed to help you uh, move the needle forward as far as your finances Mm -hmm. you use your savings to invest Mm -hmm. you don't use credit to invest you shouldn't use credit to invest But use your savings to invest because that's money that you actually have. Use that to make more money. Absolutely. So to break it down again, let's make sure that we understand the the ratios. 50% should go towards your needs. So we're talking about housing. uh, We're talking about clothing. We're talking about food and transportation. Those are the things that you need. Now, when I say clothing, remember, we're we're talking about the clothing that you need on your back. We're not talking about shopping sprees. (laughs) Right. So you may can afford Gucci, but you may need Buca Boy. (laughs) Buca Boy? (laughs) What? I just went back because I remember when people boy when I was younger. So <laughs> Gap, H and M, something. 
Bugle boy. Okay, that's thrown back. All right. Anyway, so so then then that's fifty percent. Then the thirty percent should be. I'm so tripping about off of the bugle boy. The thirty percent should then be your wants, like we said. So groom, grooming, that type of shopping uh, sprees like that. Any sort of expenses. If you're trying to pay down debt, don't let your debt expenses outweigh the amount of money that you need. Right. Mm -hmm. um, whatever else is in there, you know, your health care, your dental care, your child care, all of that should go into the want category, which is thirty percent of your income even your blow money goes into your want category exactly money that you just have just to go and blow it however you want to you are absolutely able to have blow money i think when people think about you know organizing their finances and putting a plan together that you can't have any fun absolutely go have fun we're just saying create a plan for this this yeah. is all we're doing yeah um, travel being a big thing throw that in the ones category put a certain amount of money away every single month and if you want to travel then you know see that money stack up and then go take the trip that you want at least you planned for it but you weren't irresponsible irresponsibly spending and you know you went out on a trip and now you're more worrying about how to pay rent mm -hmm. that's not what we're talking about <laughs> doing and then the the rest of the the money that's uh, that we have the 20 percent is for the savings which is what you should always be paying yourself first with right now you know can you get rich by being cheap absolutely you can but it, there's a, a certain understanding that uh comes along with it because there's some people who are cheap who you know, they're cheap with everything they do. They don't want to spend money to even make money. There's some people who cheap who are cheap because uh, they have to be. There's yeah. there's different levels to understanding this this question. It's very broad. Mm -hmm. Can you get rich by being cheap? You absolutely can. Yes, and can. you absolutely can't. Also, depending on which way you lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, what, are we saying cheap? in the organization's ways absolutely that's not cheap that's just planning again i'm, I'm being cheeky um yeah. but but yes that's how you get rich is because you have a plan you can't tell me that there is not any millionaire or billionaire on this planet that is not actively tracking their finances that is how you get you know to accomplish your financial goals is because you have to track if you don't track if you don't pay attention you don't know what the hell's going on and next thing you know you're wondering why you don't have money at the end of the day right and we learned this lesson through experience there's uh, a wealthy individual that we that we know, but he will not spend money when you go to a restaurant. Mm -mm. If he invites you to a restaurant, he's going to eat salad and he expects you to eat salad. And you're if, paying. If, <laughs> and if, you, if you invite him to a restaurant... He's throwing he's, down. Yeah, and he's going to look at you to pay for it. But, you know, in another uh, scenario, he may spend a million dollars on an investment. And that's because... He understands where his money is allocated for. His his money isn't allocated to eating at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. His money is allocated to buying groceries and eating a nice meal at home. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so who's cheap? So who's cheap? Mm -hmm. Now, we, we see him out in public and we say he's cheap, but, you know, in other aspects of his life, he's not cheap at all. Mm -mm. So there, I say that to say that there's really a balancing act that we have to play and that we have to set up parameters for ourselves and not let anybody encourage you to get outside of those because the people that encourage you, they don't know what your income is or what your plans are, or what your goals are, the milestones that you want to create for yourself. Mm -hmm. You may temporarily not spend money on something just because you're trying to attain a certain milestone for mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. So stay strong in what you believe that's going to make you um, as successful as you want to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And also don't let perception uh mislead whatever you think is going on because mm -hmm. a lot of times we can look at that individual and think he's cheaper we can look at somebody who has you know diamond earrings gold chains and all sorts of stuff and think that they're rich when really in the background maybe that's not the case so never uh, rely on perception and only worry about your pockets because can't nobody else change your pockets yeah. <laughs> you need to figure out whatever it is that you need to do to start earning more money, creating cash flow that can come into your household so that you can organize your finances in a certain way that will allow you to obtain the goals that you want for yourself and for yeah, your family. Absolutely. Because you remember when we were dating, I had Prada sneakers, but <laughs> I didn't have Prada money. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I look good though. He looked good. That's how he got me. He looked good. I know, but when we got together, you're like, you ain't got no money. <laughs> you were a student. All right, you know, let, let's be honest. Uh, still, though, the, 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 the point still applies. <laughs> you know, have money and not look like you have money. Mm. There's there's a, a difference. You can fake like you uh, don't have money. You can't fake like you got money because you'll get found out. 
Real quick. Real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So if anything, again, guys, what well, we want to make sure that you understand from this video, uh, perception is not everything. Understanding the difference between cheap mm-hmm. and cheap. <laughs> 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 and, and how to create the best plan for yourself and for your family so that you can organize your fan- finances in such a way that will allow you to move the needle forward, move in a direction that's going to allow you to gain more income. So because that money is allocated in, in where it needs to be so right. that you can create cash flow, make those investments, flip money and, and free yourself from, you know, whatever the shackles are that are, are keeping you from moving forward with your finances. Yeah, absolutely. Your goal is financial freedom. Mm-hmm. And if your goals for financial freedom doesn't align with somebody else's goals for that day, then do not change because of them Mm, because mm. what they're thinking or what they want for you isn't for you to be financially free they want you to be in that moment yeah yeah i'm so glad that you said that because that there's so many financial gurus there's so many you know family and friends whoever everybody has an opinion on what you should do and all you need to do is just open your ears be open to everything that people are saying but then be true to your heart you know what sounds good what sounds realistic what is it that i can actually do because you can fall into so many traps and, and get even further behind the eight ball than where you currently are if you listen to wrong advice so you always have to think about yourself your family and not what the next person is doing hear what the next person is doing and figure out does it make sense for me does this actually think that it's going to get me that where i need to be and if not you know go figure out what the next opinion is Um, but for us it's always about making sure that we are protecting our principle protecting Mm -hmm. our money uh, with whole life insurance which is what we do and that's what we teach on the infinite banking channel so if this is something that you think that you want to do protect your principal and then utilize OPM, other people's money, which is the insurance company's money to make your investments, then click on the link below because we would love for you to join the Wealth Nation family. Now, let's preference this because we just got finished saying if you don't uh, uh, have a plan, mm. then you know you, you, you kind of fall prey to you know, whatever's happening oh, around totally, you. totally. So if you're interested in getting involved with infinite banking, you have to make sure that you have a plan before getting involved with it. Because if you have debt, that's totally fine. Mm-hmm. But you have to make sure you have a plan in order to get out of debt. If you want to invest, it's totally fine for you to get involved with uh, infinite banking. But you have to make sure that, you you know, we come together and create a plan. And you have to follow that plan. Mm. Because if you don't follow the plan and the system doesn't work, then it's not the system. It's you not working the system. Mm-hmm. So if you want you know, some more ideas on how to generate financial freedom, then check out our next video where we give you different ideas on how to generate, how to create financial freedom for yourself. And don't forget to click on our freebie where we have 52 different ways where you can generate that passive income. Remember to own your own lifestyle. Or someone else will.